In this video, I want to discuss how to roll over your old 401k into a new employer plan, or if it makes more sense to take those monies and roll it over into an IRA for more flexibility and customization options. So what is a 401k? How does that account grow? And then what happens when somebody tries to transfer that into a new employer plan? Um, or, you know, what's the difference between that and the IRA? And when somebody is done working for a previous employer, they start the new company, and now they're eligible to take those old 401k monies and roll it over to an IRA, uh, you know, why, why might that make more mathematical sense? And, and really just going over the pros and cons of each. So when you think of a 401k, I want you to think of it like a bucket. The way on how this bucket grows is by the contribution somebody's placing into their plan the employer match that they're receiving, so this is ultimately on the contribution side, and then the rate of return that's coming back based upon the uh, performance uh, of their investments that they chose within that plan. So the contribution side, this is the controllables. This is what, you know, if, if you're going and you make $100,000 in a given year and you put 10% of your salary into your 401k account, well, then you know $10,000 is being placed into this bucket. If let's say there's an employer match of 5% in this example, well, then they're placing $5,000 into this bucket. So you have $15,000 which got placed into the bucket for that year. The employer match, it's very important to note, is the employer match is uh, correlated to the contribution amount that you place in there. So it doesn't matter how much monies are already sitting in the 401k account this employer match every year, and really the, the main incentive to leverage a 401k account is to say, okay, I'm placing money, it's out of sight, out of mind, and there's an incentive to place money into this bucket because my employer is giving me some sort of match. If this was at $0 and somebody placed in 10000 and they had a match of 5% or, you know, it would be 5000 If, let's say, um, you know, this was sitting, this bucket was sitting at a million dollars, and this person made a hundred grand, and they put in ten thousand. The match, and the match was five percent. The match would still only be five thousand dollars. So the employer match is not determined by how much account value is sitting in this bucket. Very important to to understand that concept because this is what's typically overlooked, and why somebody makes that common mistake of saying, "Okay, I'm just going to go and and take my money from my old 401k and place it into the new 401k." When you're doing so, you might be shooting yourself in the foot. What do I mean by that? Well, we understand that this is one side on how the bucket grows. The other side is off of this rate of return. So when you're working for the company and you're going through your employee benefits package, you're going to be given these investment options to choose within your 401k account. The downside to a 401k is you have limited options. Think of them as eggs in your basket to choose from. So typical 401ks only have about 15 to 30 different funds to choose from, eggs in their basket. So there's only so much juice that you could squeeze, you know, from from these options. So if you want to be super aggressive, or if you want to have some, you know, fancy investment related strategies, you only have 15 to 30 options. So that's where you know things are a little. When, when you have more limitations, obviously it's going to restrict you on the performance metric, on uh, you know the diversified metric that you could have as opposed to other accounts. So this is where, if let's say somebody comes back and they're a very aggressive investor and they leverage an aggressive portfolio uh, that's available within their 401k, and the market went down, well then the account balance is going to be going down because this performance is either going to be positive or it's going to be negative. So let's just say if it dropped down 10%, that's going to be equivalent to someone taking a sword and slicing out 10% of the bucket in just that one day, one year, you know, however you know, however that, that 10% that drop occurred in that example. Now, on the opposite side of the coin, if let's say the market grew or this, uh, you know, the, the, the different investments grew by 10%, well, then it's going to be equivalent to someone, you know, pouring a 10% gain into this bucket. So you have the compound interest of the positives from the contributions, the positives from the rate of return side, and then that's what's going to make the bucket fatter and fatter and fatter, which is fine. The downside, once again, are the limitations, those limited options to choose in the 401k. So one of the benefits when somebody's no longer working for an employer and they switch over to a new company is they now have access to take these 401k monies and roll it over into an IRA. And what that does is it fixes the limitation problem that I mentioned. So with an IRA, 
what ultimately occurs is you have more eggs in your basket to choose from, better customization options available. So instead of the 15 to 30 different options that you're handcuffed to in your 401k account, you could have over 5,000 different options to choose from if you want to leverage an investment strategy or you want to leverage an income-related goal or emergency goal or uh, you know just, just a you know, safe accumulation goal, a legacy goal, a tax goal. So there's, there's so many different ways on how to skin that cat because you are taking the old 401k monies, the monies that you've already accumulated, and placing that into an IRA. So conceptually, this is what an IRA account value looks like. So it's very similar to the 401k, except for instead of the monies are being, you can make contributions into an IRA every year, um, but there's not going to be a, a type of match that's happening with the IRA. So basically the, the way on how the IRA account grows is by the contributions that the individual is making or any rollover monies coming in from other qualified retirement plans that would also uh, you know be placed in there. So in that example, let's say if you had an old 401k account and it was sitting at a million dollars, well, that was with company you know ABC, the employer ABC, Rather than take this million dollar account and roll it over into the 401k, which all you're doing is saying, okay, I'm going from limited funding options to limited funding options because when you sever employment, it now allows you to be, makes you eligible to go and roll over these monies. You'd be basically placing it in there as a rollover. So now starting day one, this account's going to be sitting at a million dollars. And now the rate of return side, if let's say you want to you know, stay within that investment realm, now you have over those 5,000 options to choose from. Um, so that it'll give you a better chance to have, uh, you know, obviously a, a better diversified portfolio, something that's more appropriate to your risk tolerance, um, you know, that, that, that could give you a better performance. So something that could give you a higher quality with a lower cost than what potential you have in your, uh, you know, in that old 401k account or even the new 401k options. So it doesn't just stop there regarding how you set up an IRA and the different investment options within an IRA. You could customize your IRA so that it's setting up for a specific retirement goal, whether that be a retirement income goal, a retirement growth goal, retirement death benefit goal, et cetera. And that's where these IRAs really come into play and can really help out your, your position. So just to reiterate, the old 401k, the, the, the benefits of the 401k accounts are if your employer is giving you some sort of match. Well, when you no longer work for that employer, that match is going to stop and you basically just have a bucket that's sitting there and you're only relying on the rate of return side to grow that bucket. So when you go and you transfer it into the new 401k, all you're doing is you're transferring the potential to have more options available like you can through the IRA. You're surrendering that to just go into a 401k account, which is going to keep you within those restricted options, those restricted, you know, think of them as eggs in the basket. So that's where, you know, you just want to be very careful with, you know, how you set that up and make sure you're not making that common mistake. Just say, you know, just saying, oh, well, you know, I had it in a 401k, so I'm just going to leave it in a new 401k and just kind of, you know, leave it be. That's where you're not really creating a plan. You're not taking advantage of the situation because when somebody's working for an employer, typically they can't just take the monies and take it out of the 401k and roll it over into an IRA whenever they want. There has to be certain qualification points. When you stop working for an employer, when you terminate, uh, you know, your, your employment, that's what makes you eligible to leverage those old 401k monies and roll that over into the IRA. And that's really the main problem is losing out on the opportunity for the customization. If you know you have a specific goal in mind or you need help with trying to figure out what your goal is and you have an old 401k account, feel free to give us a call of, of, at our 1-800 number. It's 1-800-566-1002. And we could at least help structure you on, okay, what would be an ideal retirement path from your current age point A to your ideal retirement age point B how to make sure to get from point A to point B successfully, and then from point B until, you know, as morbid as it might sound, date of death successfully, uh, making sure that everything is, is, is actually, you know, created in, in different steps, different intervals, so that it says, okay, well, if you went and you, went a, uh, you did a 401k to 401k transfer, these are the pros, these are the cons with doing that. Uh, if you did a 401k to IRA transfer, you could customize this better, you know, as per, you know, what your goals are, as per what your wishes are. And we really get into the nit and gritty to make sure that you could, we, we could basically extract information from you to, to help you understand, okay, what is most important to you and, uh, you know, how to make sure that you're, you're getting set up on the correct path. The other problem is shooting in the dark. 
And, you know, the 401k to IRA rollover could sound great, but if you don't know how to effectively leverage the IRA or multiple IRAs to customize, you know, some sort of plan for you, you know, you're not even aim. you don't even know what you're aiming for. So that's where, you know, it's very important that you at least have some sort of structure involved uh, so that you can say, okay, conceptually, this is where I want to get to. And then you unravel the layer of the onions to say, okay, how do I actually get to that spot? And this is where, you know, I, I speak about a couple of these different uh, solutions or these couple of these different strategies um, that people could use most effectively. The first type of strategy is something known as the three things scenario. And that's saying, okay, how can I use the smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary towards each area most effectively? So the first thing that you want to make sure is accomplished is your income strategy. So let's say we have an individual that's age 55, they have an old 401k account, they're working for a new employer, or they just had old 401ks that are basically sitting out there with their previous employers, how to make sure, and let's just say that the value was of a million dollars, just for really easy math, um, you know, how do you use this effectively? How do you make sure you're not shooting in the dark and there's actually some sort of strategy in play? Well, if we understand after you know, some questioning, we realize that this individual wants to retire at age 65. He's not offered a pension plan, but he is offered Social Security income. And let's just say the Social Security income is going to bring in $40,000 at that time. Well, after doing a budgeting analysis and figuring out what his current expenses are and then what his retirement expenses will be at that age 65, maybe we come up with that there's a $60,000 need that he has to accomplish. So out of this $1 million, this individual has a 10-year time horizon before he has to start triggering income from some sort of uh, income source that will be maximized by first leveraging this, this $1 million account. So rather than leveraging the full $1 million and try to create some sort of income strategy with that, where individuals unfortunately you know, fall victim to that mistake, they might be able to use $100,000 or $150,000 in this example towards an IRA account, IRA number one, that could be set up for a hybrid annuity or some sort of uh, you know, income-related product, some sort of longevity insurance that says, okay, as long as I'm placing in these smaller dollars, it will be able to produce me $20,000 of cash flow in the future. Um, the reason why I mention hybrid annuities is because something that gives an income rider where you still have flexibility, you still have control of your monies. If you ever want to take the monies and walk away, you still have access to that. If like, let's say interest rates went through the roof again and, um, you know, there's, there's just better ways on how you could uh, more effectively grow that account. You want to have those type of get out options at your fingertips. But, you know, uh, for the, for the argument's sake of, of this hypothetical example, it would only cost you. 150000 to place into IRA number one, understanding that this would generate $20,000 of income in 10 years at this individual's age 65. So that 150000 accomplished that step one. Now step two, when they move on to the emergency need, maybe they want to have rule of thumb is about you know, six to 12 months of expenses. Um, they want to leave it into some sort of you know, liquid-based account. So an effective route might be, okay, uh, you know, by the time I'm age 60, I want to make sure that I'm leaving at least 50000 at my ex at my discretion, at my uh, disposal that I could always pull from in case of that, oh my gosh, moment that occurs. So this could be IRA number two, 50000 could be sitting in a money market account um, where it's not going to be hindered with downward market losses. It's really not going to have growth in there, but it's kind of acts like a checking savings account that you could leverage, you know, for that later date for the time that the individual is above age 59 and a half. So that'd be IRA number two. So out of the, you know, the, you use the smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary with step one, with that first IRA out of this million dollars, it only costs us 150000 Step two only costs the 50000 of that. And now you have $800,000 that could be leveraged for a growth strategy, an effective growth strategy. So based upon the person's risk tolerance, um, you know, there's different ways on how to customize this growth slash inflationary uh, you know, protection goal. So what we didn't do is say, okay, the million dollars, just throw a bunch of money at this income play, or this million dollars, throw a bunch of money at this growth play, or a million dollars, throw a bunch of money at the safety, the emergency play. What we did was we stuck to each lane. And out of this growth-related strategy, you could create, you know, IRAs number, you know, two, sorry, you could create number three, number four, 
number five, number six. So like one might be super aggressively invested. The other might be with a fixed account. The other might be with a bank related product, might be with an index related account. So there, there's a whole multitude of things that you could do. The case in point is we're not just, you know, shooting in the dark. We're not just saying, oh, I hope everything works out. There's an actual strategy behind it. Another strategy when someone gets really to that growth stage is something that we coined the, the reef method. And uh, with the reef method, it stands for risk. So the R stands for risk, meaning that it's, it's imperative that we know what your current risk capacity or risk tolerance is if you're risk averse and really what your risk score is. So we have we use different artificial intelligence um, uh, links and, and, and software that, that pinpoint exactly what your risk score will be. From there, that's really the crux of everything. This is where we try to go and, and build out that, that growth-related need uh, to make sure that everything is effective and it's 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 specific to you know what your individual mindset is uh, off of what the market is. If you feel like the market's going to be bullish, then you might have a higher risk score than if you feel as if it's going to be bearish. So that's the R in the reef method. The E stands for eggs. So eggs in your basket. What are you, what are you currently invested in? What's your current allocation? Does that measure up, or is there a large variance between your current allocation risk score versus your personal risk score? The other E is examine examine what's available to you. Does that mean leveraging, you know, an IRA account or multiple IRA accounts to make sure that that's going to be most mathematically effective? Does that mean staying in that old 401k if for whatever reason there's an institutional fund that you can't have on the on the IRA side? So, you know, really examine and make sure that when, um, you know, you're looking at these different growth opportunities that it is still in line with your risk tolerance and then F or for fees. Little things that individuals just overlook is saying, oh, well, this should just be the cost. This is the expense ratio of my mutual funds that I'm in. Well, on the average cost of a mutual fund is 1.31%. That's obviously a, a big deal when you're considering, okay, I'm going to be sitting in these mutual funds for 10, 15, 20 years. This constant negative is a constant pressure against your account. This is a constant holes coming out of your, your bucket. So if let's say your account balance or the market goes down 10%, it's not just going down 10%, you're also losing money to the expense ratios. On top of it, you might have an advisory fee that advisor is charging you another one and a quarter percent. So all these different compound interest factors come into play and we want to see, okay, what's their way to strip down those costs? Well, you know, there are no load mutual funds. Um, are there, you know, uh, low cost ETFs, index funds to put you in a better uh, trajectory towards success? So, that's where you know the reef method could be effective in conjunction with the three thing scenario. We took this a step further and we trademarked a process known as the retirement diet plan where it puts things into a more intricate perspective. So it's saying, okay, the diet, the D in diet stands for distribution, making sure that you have a complete distribution strategy. The I stands for investment slash growth. The E stands for estate slash legacy planning. And then the T stands for tax planning. So how to make sure that you're able to leverage the reef method, the three things scenario, and, and some other factors, some other parameters in there so that we're covering your financial plan on every different angle. So it basically takes the key areas of financial planning and optimizes it for success. So if, let's say, the markets are doing well, that's fantastic. The retirement diet plan is still standing there. If the market goes down, that's fine. The retirement diet plan is still standing there because we have a downward market loss um, type solution, uh, you know, for that individual situation. And then if let's say the markets are going sideways, that's fine because, you know, we have that optimized as well. So, you know, how, how can you create success in any market environment so that you're actually creating a plan? You're not just creating a portfolio. So, you know, too often we see this where an individual has old 401k accounts or they rolled over their monies into new 401ks or, um, you know, they just have a plethora of different IRAs, Roth IRAs, Roth accounts, uh, traditional accounts. And they don't really know, you know, what to do with it other than just keep accumulating, 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 where there should be at least some sort of strategy so that they don't have to panic when they actually hit retirement. They could successfully walk into retirement and know that they have the confidence, um, you know, to, to do so that they're not going to outlive their monies. They're going to have discretionary buckets sitting there. If, let's say, a legacy plan is important to them, how to make sure that that's created effectively, how to make sure that they're being most tax efficient so they're able to, to pull out the most amount of net income during retirement. So, you know, obviously all those things come into play. So in closing, if you found value in this video, feel free to call our 1-800 number. It's 1-800-566-1002 and reference this video to speak with a specialist. 
we're available to speak 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and whenever you're calling in, just once again, reference this video and then, uh, you know, we'll make sure that, uh, that we get you set up with the correct advisor to handle your needs. Another more effective way, which is more flexible for somebody's schedule, would be to visit our website. The URL will be in the description of this video. It's afossifinancial.com or retiresharp.com. And after you're on the website for a couple of seconds, you're going to see this uh, digital calendar is going to pop up so that you could set up a time that's most convenient for you, a day and time that's most convenient for you. You could write in the notes section exactly what you want to see or reference this video. And there's a bunch of different parameters, but you could obviously... Review the website. You can see how our phone consultations or our Zoom consultations work. Obviously, in this post-COVID era, we want to make sure that you guys are as safe as possible, and then you're able to you know handle everything from the comfort of your own home. Review everything. Review our videos. Uh, you know, download any of our free reports out there, um, just to make sure that you know everything is uh, you know is is accurate and, and your learning process is uh, is you know is being maximized. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp. So you could have access to the most updated videos. I want to try to create these videos, you know, every week, a couple of videos per week, just to further your educational process, especially if there's any changes with the economy, making sure that you could, you know, leverage these effective strategies and, and conceptualize everything so that it's not like alien language, you know, when you do come closer and closer to retirement. But once again, at any time, just give us a call. We'll be sure to help you out. Thanks so much, guys.